Oxidation number is a concept you may be familiar with from your introductory chemistry course. And just as in that course, we can assign oxidation numbers to carbons and really any atom within an organic structure in a covalent compound. The way we do this is to apply a very formal procedure involving electronegativity. We look at the atom in question and we push all of its bonding electrons to the more electronegative atom involved. And then we look at the formal charges that result from this pushing. In doing this, we tend to ignore carbon-carbon and carbon-hydrogen bonds. So let's look at a few examples. Here are some strongly reduced carbons. These are reduced carbons with very low, in fact, negative oxidation numbers because metal carbon bonds decrease the oxidation number of carbon. This is because the metal is less electronegative than carbon. In thinking about oxidation number, we take the electrons in the carbon-metal bond, here the metal is lithium in each case, and push them toward the carbon. In this first case, this would create a hypothetical resonance structure in which the CH3 carbon is now negatively charged and the lithium is positively charged. And that negative one charge on the C corresponds to an oxidation number of carbon of negative one. If we have, really just as a hypothetical, two lithium atoms linked to a common carbon, both of these bonding pairs are pushed onto carbon, and the resulting resonance structure, quote-unquote, as obnoxious as it may seem, contains a negative two charge on the carbon atom and plus one charges on each of the lithium atoms. That negative two charge on the carbon points to an oxidation number of carbon of negative two. Finally, if we had three lithium atoms linked to this carbon, you can imagine this would lead to a formal charge of negative three at the central carbon atom, and thus an oxidation number of negative three. So these carbons with negative oxidation number have a huge excess of electron density. This is an idea we'll explore in more detail when we look at organometallic reagents in a future lesson. But the punchline for reactivity is that they are strongly basic and strongly nucleophilic, and they're strong reducing agents. They have a propensity themselves to become oxidized by forming bonds to more electronegative atoms, certainly more electronegative than the likes of lithium, anyway. Now, in thinking about other scenarios, we can ask about the effect of bonds between carbon and electronegative heteroatoms. And here, the effect is essentially the opposite. When carbon bonds to an atom that is more electronegative, than itself, the oxidation number of carbon increases by one unit for each of these CX bonds. And here we don't really distinguish between sigma and pi bonds. So for example, if we look at the alcohol, the first example on the left of this slide, what we would do with this carbon is take the electrons in the carbon-oxygen bond and push them to the more electronegative atom in the bond. Notice this is the same thing we did above, it's just that now the oxygen is the more electronegative atom within this CO bond. And in doing that, you can imagine that would leave a positive charge on this carbon. More specifically, a plus one charge. As such, the oxidation number of that carbon is plus one. With two bonds between carbon and some electronegative heteroatom, such as oxygen, the oxidation number ends up being plus two. We take both of the carbon-oxygen bonds, push them both to oxygen, and this helps us see that the charge on the carbon would be plus two, and so its oxidation number formally is plus two. And finally, when we have three bonds between oxygen and carbon, or any electronegative heteroatom and carbon, we end up at an oxidation state of plus three. And here we're pushing all three bonding pairs of electrons toward the more electronegative oxygen atoms. And this would result in a charge of plus three, in the resulting resonance structure, quote unquote, and so the formal oxidation number is plus three. And as you might imagine, if atoms with negative oxidation numbers are basic or nucleophilic, atoms with positive oxidation numbers tend to be acidic or electrophilic. These are atoms that want to accept electron density, such as the carbonyl carbon of formaldehyde, which we see in the middle here. We're familiar with this carbon acting as an electrophile, and the oxidation number provides us with a nice quantitative formalism for thinking about that. As a bit of an interesting aside, 
strange and intriguing things start happening when both metals and electronegative heteroatoms are connected to, for example, a common carbon atom. So something like an acyl lithium in which a carbonyl carbon is linked to both the oxygen by the, the typical double bond of the carbonyl group and the lithium atom. What's going on here? Well, if we apply our electron pushing procedure, something interesting happens. We take the electrons in the carbon oxygen bond and push them up toward the more electronegative oxygen. But at the same time, we get a pushing of electrons from the lithium toward carbon. The carbon lithium bond electrons head toward the more electronegative carbon atom. And if you do all the electron pushing, and let's go ahead and get it done, you end up with an oxidation number of plus one at the carbonyl carbon, which is rather strange if you're used to thinking about carbonyls, ketones and aldehydes, being at the plus two oxidation state. The presence of lithium attached to that carbonyl carbon has a huge impact on the density of electrons at that carbon. It's nowhere near as electrophilic as a typical carbonyl carbon. And the oxidation number helps us see that it's plus one where an ordinary carbonyl group would be plus two. And in fact, in these acyl lithiums, the carbonyl carbon becomes a good nucleophile, turning the whole idea of the carbonyl group on its head.